dealing with human enemies is not shit. Mm. Stop killing my people! Shit. Ow! Oh shit. This is going well. Yep. There's another one down. Because they went berserk and couldn't use their own medikit. I want to destroy more hostile aliens. So. That's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna fuck up. We're gonna fuck up ET. Yeah, let's go for it. Well, the Mars combat platform. Always a good thing. Eh? Naming something like that after the God of War. The Mechanical Armed Reconnaissance System is a remote-controlled armoured vehicle small enough to be carried inside a dropship. Faster, tougher and better armed than any soldier, it would be a worthy addition to our tactical teams. Hmm. This vehicle is designed primarily for scouting work, compact and highly mobile advance in front of your soldiers to sight enemies and draw out overwatch fire. Given its strong armor and relatively rugged construction, it's significantly more resilient to alien weapons than the average human. It also probably doesn't bleed. <coughs> when it does encounter enemies, the Mars usually has two methods of dealing with them. The more mundane option is the auto rifle, little more than a standard infantry rifle with a high capacity magazine and better recoil stabilization. The other option is the rocket pod mounted atop the vehicle. Although the Mars can only carry six rockets into battle, each of these is tipped with a powerful incendiary warhead that will demolish almost all terrain within its sizable blast radius. Though it only deals mediocre damage against enemy units, it is very effective at breaking their armor. Additional weapon variants are also available should you wish to experiment further. Finally, note that the Mars is heavy enough to be able to smash through most walls and cover objects as if they were not there. This has obvious tactical utility in itself, but a canny commander can also use this ability to create paths for nearby soldiers to use. Now, we have a sentry gun. Although I shall refrain from commenting on the rather pathetic attempts to defend our previous facility from the cleaners, I thought I did a reasonable job, come on! I nonetheless thought it prudent to bolster our defensive options. One hopes such efforts may help avoid a repeat of prior failures. Thus I present the Sentry Gun, an affordable and robust vehicle intended specifically for protecting our bases. Being a far simpler design than the Mars, it is significantly faster and cheaper to manufacture while still retaining most of the combat performance. Much of the simplification arises from the use of wheels for propulsion rather than tracks. This reduces overall cost and complexity while also providing the weapon with an elevated firing position that improves accuracy. The downside of this design is that the sentry gun is prone to toppling over when attempting to traverse uneven terrain. It is therefore unsuitable for general combat use and should be deployed only on flat concrete floors of our facilities. This makes sentry guns a specialised tool, though perhaps unnecessary in many situations, these inexpensive vehicles are nonetheless a highly effective way to bolster the defensive garrison of a base, particularly when living space is tight. <coughs> Fair enough. We'll 
deal with that after we've finished what we're currently researching. Because I'm not sure if it's, uh, if there's a queue at this stage. Oh, we don't have a current... Don't, don't, we're not researching anything. What the hell's going on with you? Why not? <laughs> okay. Um... door was closed for a reason, Commander. Well, bite me, dickhead. You're not doing anything. You're not doing any work. What were you doing? Having a wank. Uh, I think we need more money and to know what the hell these aliens are up to. Or what they're like. for a Mars. They're very expensive. Compared to 40 grand for a sentry gun. I think I'm going to build a sentry gun though because always handy to have one. In fact more handy to have two. <coughs> we'll see how that goes. Um, now, actually, is there anything we need to do with the base? We've got a hangar. Well, we've got three hangars. We've got storeroom, which is that. Generator, radar, quarters, slab. Could always do with a training center. We don't even have a medical center. What the hell's wrong with us? And some defenses. No, we don't have enough power. Okay. Well, we'll build another generator. Then we will build a, a bloody missile battery right there. Yeah? Yeah. Cool. <sighs> Very much in the style of the original eight, uh, 90s XCOM games, the uh, base building, which I kind of miss. Although I do like the Hive style of the latest ones to be fair. Okay, and now I will build a Mars. If we had a Mars, maybe what happened to Norbert wouldn't have happened. That's all I have to say. Maybe something worse would have happened. Who knows? We'll... <laughs> We're learning. Oh, tactical mission. Capture resources. The cleaners are using this office as a secret intelligence hub. Raiding the site may allow us to capture more data about their organization. We'll reduce panic level across the entire globe. If we succeed, that's worth it. That is an awesome reward 
at any point in any of these sorts of games. I feel. Um... Adams and Anna Smanova. And let us proceed. Okay, so where is this? Looking at well, not somewhere I can pinpoint precisely, but somewhere on what looks like a border. Okay, the Mars is complete. I'm going out without Mars, but that's fine. Okay, <coughs> we owe these bastards for fucking up our base in the, uh, prologue. They made us run away. <coughs> So we're going to make them pay. <coughs> okay, this office building is being used by the cleaners to gather and process intelligence. Retrieving data from the site should help us to identify and expose the cleaning command and control network. This mission cannot be won by eliminating all enemies. The dropship will lift off automatically once your soldiers have returned to it with cat sufficient captured data. Okay. Capture at least 10 cleaner items. Data items from desks within the target building. Return these items to the dropship and lift off. Lose conditions, everybody dies, of course. Enemy reinforcements will spawn continuously from turn six. Only items within the dropship will be recovered from mission end, and additional cleaner data will run further cleaner network progress and can be sold for $25,000. Okay, Commander, the dropship has touched down. Get in, grab as much data from their computers as possible, then get back to the dropship. We won't have long before the, the cleaner reinforcements arrive. Understood. You're absolutely sure this building is under cleaner control? Positive. Well, mostly. Too late to back out now, though. Get on with it. Okay.
Oh shit. This is not going well. Who the hell is he? Okay, I just picked the worst possible location to, s to put that person. Oh well. <sighs> if my squad gets wiped, my squad gets wiped. That's all there is to say about it. Bastard. That was a, a really, really terrible shot. You should be ashamed of yourself. I know my tactics are probably absolutely atrocious, but I don't really care. <coughs> I never profess to be good at these games. I just really enjoy them. Ow! Stop shooting my people! Ha! That's alright, he wasn't my people. Still, sh shouldn't be shooting him. Probably. Now he's dead. Okay. What are we doing now? Let's move you up behind 
those uh, they look like newspaper dispensers Jangmei with your riot shield. You can open up the building for us. Thank you. figure the riot shield is basically, you know, turns them into uh, a walking wall, essentially, although it's probably only counts as minimal cover, but still. also gives me an opportunity to fully explore the capabilities of all of my troops and their loadouts. That's, you know, learning is always good. We are a fan of learning things. Now, reinforcements will happen at turn six. get on top of the bus. No, I cannot. Okay. I think I might actually leave these two sort of near the uh, near the chopper um, so that got people available to uh, take out any enemies when they do arrive. But I'm going to loot this fella because, you know, why not? Should be able to. Yes. Okay. Is there any difference? Not really. But, extra ammo, you never know, that might be useful. <coughs> okay, we're done here. For that turn, anyway. I mean, obviously we're not done, done. <laughs> We've not got any um, intel yet at all. door, which is a window and not a door. Of course it's a window and not a door. That's silly of me. But you can still break in through the fucking window anyway and now search that... Okay. Not search that desk because you can't reach there yet. You, however, can run in there and get rummaging. Okay, that's one item already. 
two items already. He could have rummaged, but I was left clicking, not right. Okay. Groovy. Um, do the closest door, I think. Shit! But shotgun. Shit, but shotgun might be my new favourite game. Okay. Oh, come on. That's better. Yeah, I think... Yes, that was taken by the shield, and it... did a hell of a lot of damage to the shield. So, fair enough. Um, right. You can jump in through that window, apparently. And Overwatch, I figure. these people than I was expecting there to be. But I'm probably basing it all on um, the Firaxis XCOM games. They're certainly the most recent ones that I've played. And while they were amazing, I'm certainly not going to say a bad word about them. Um, this is certainly more like the original games. The ones with the hyphen, twixt X and com. <coughs> Oh, look, stop shooting my fellas. well actually but he also can do something about both his own bleeding and Sergeant Bows and of course Hana Asano here heard the gunshots saw her mate run out of there and uh, he's going to rush in and uh, what is she going to do? She's going to take position in the corner there. That's what. Um, 
Scotty Hill there is gonna blindly charge in. Though he is also gonna check his corners because he's not stupid. He's just adrenaline rush a little bit. Also used too many TU. And so has Anna. Okay, that's not good. Got six of ten dealies, though bits of it, bits of data. That's pretty cool so far. I think off to a good start. Yeah, there's three of them. Okay. There's two now. Um, oh, she's not going anywhere then. Okay, you... Come in here and run right up behind him and shoot him in the back with a shotgun. <laughs> uh, that was way more satisfying than it probably should have been. Seven. Eight. Anybody. 
open doors often mean people have been through. Actually, I'm just going to leave him there for now. And he's going to call out to... Okay, I don't think anyone's really close enough to help, except the people who have been injured. Ah, uh, she's nearby in case anything goes sideways. Okay. Just because they're injured doesn't mean they can't fight. Oh! They've got dudes on the roof. Okay. It's up. The first plane of reinforcements have arrived and there's more coming. Grab whatever you can and get back to the chopper. I suppose you can lob a grenade that far, can you? No. No, he cannot. Um. Let's see what's... Oh, shit. Smoke inhalation damage. Great. I mean, awesome that there's a mechanic for it and that it causes stun damage from the point of view of we can use that knowledge against our enemies, but painful as at the same time. We need Norbert. where it's time to leave. <clears throat> Beginning with the injured people, naturally. But still, this is an interesting new mission type that uh, I've not encountered before, which I do like. Oh, 
shit. Might have just killed him. Dealing with human enemies is oh shit. Dealing with human enemies is a different experience as well. And not a wonderfully good one. So yeah, just lost another dude. Scotty, I'm going to need you to do that. There we go. Okay. Well, shit, this is going all sorts of sideways, isn't it? Okay, fine. How about go there and then shoot the fucker? Shoot the fucker. Cool. Um, not so cool.
got too much important data, you need to get back to the chopper. This is possibly going to get this fella absolutely murdered. Although, maybe not. Roger Adams is down. Oh shit! Thank you. There we go. sucks with their pistol. Fair enough. Could get absolutely slaughtered before the end of the next turn. We shall see. Mm. Stop killing my people! Very rude. Because that one, I believe, had a bunch of shit. Yeah.
Okay, so we've got 13 of them. And we've lost two more. There's different mission types though, that's cool. It used to just be go out and fuck up aliens. Oh, Scott Hill, you're safe, you're in the chopper. Where are you gonna run to? You're in the chopper already! <sighs> it's not good when your fellas are panicking. You know, I can't help but feel like we're forgetting somebody. Maybe leaving a couple of our brothers, siblings in arms behind. Place people. And of course, soldiers with high strength are able to throw grenades further. That just makes perfect sense. <clears throat> ah, yes. Rest in peace, Sergeant Elijah Adams and Sergeant Wakana Goto. Have served your world well. Okay, so that's three down. <laughs> Locals survived zero. At least he could have fought. Crimson Heart. Soldiers will be granted the Crimson Heart if they suffer more than 30 hit points of damage during a single combat mission. And that gives them plus one to all attributes, that's cool. And the Crux Solaris for Sergeant Major Hana Asano. Soldiers will be granted the Crux Solaris if they eliminate four or more hostile units in a ta single tactical mission. That's cool. That's very cool. And yeah, she definitely did some wonderful, wonderful murder. <laughs> but three earning themselves the Crimson Heart is not good. Well, it would have been five if the other two had not succumbed to their injuries. Cleaner operations. Hey, Commander, good work recovering all this data. I'm still sifting through it, but it looks like you've provided me enough loose threads to begin unraveling the entire cleaner control network. The bad news is that it's a lot harder than I expected. 
They're using almost a dozen obscure but highly classified government intelligence agencies to disguise their operations and hide their chain of command. Realistically, we need to assume those agencies have been subverted and are, full and are un fully under alien control. How extraterrestrial intelligent influence reaches this deep, I'm not sure, but I certainly don't like the implications. Although digging into classified entities isn't exactly easy, I've seen enough to suggest we're dealing with potentially thousands of cleaners. They seem to mostly work in small field teams that receive orders and supplies directly from their regional command cell, operating ind independently of other teams in the area. This structure ensures a ca captured agent cannot compromise the wider organisation, but has its own vulnerabilities. Eliminating a command cell would effectively knock out cleaner operations in the entire regions. Their field teams would be left without orders, starved of supplies, and unable to link up with one another. We don't know the exact location of these regional command cells yet, but once I make enough progress cracking the structure of the cleaner network, it should become obvious. I'll mark them on the geoscape as soon as I have a fix. Ultimately, though, our goal is to find their headquarters. This would give us the opportunity to decapitate their entire organization with a single strike. Probably the only way to put an end to the cleaner threat for good. Progress towards identifying the cleaner network is shown at the bottom of the screen. 26%, that's not bad. Capturing additional cleaner data on certain tactical missions will accelerate this process. Well, maybe it was going to be 20%, but then I got three over and that was an extra 2% each. I don't know. But that seems pretty cool and interesting. New edition. Biology. Our universe contains an almost unimaginable number of different environments in which life can potentially evolve, and this in turn means extraterrestrial beings can come in a dizzying array of possible forms. Indeed, some of these can be so profoundly strange that humanity may not even be able to recognize them as life forms at all. It is therefore surprising to discover our alien opponents bear such a close resemblance to humans. This is obvious even at the most basic level. Common foes such as sectons are bipeds with two arms and two legs, familiar musculoskeletal and organ systems, and the ability to breathe our atmosphere. The similarities continue as one conducts deeper scientific analysis. One would not expect an alien life form to have DNA at all, let alone genetic material strikingly like our own. Yet, almost 75% of the sectom genome is shared with the average human. It is possible that life can only arise in a very narrow set of circumstances, that all life in our universe is vaguely terrestrial in form because it must have evolved on a planet that closely resembles our own. However, it seems rather more likely that something more sinister is at play. Sadly, we simply lack sufficient information to speculate as to what that might be. Discovering the truth will require more research specimens, ideally ones that have not been riddled with bullets. As such, I've provided our engineers for, with designs for weapons that should be capable of non-lethally incapacitating extraterrestrial units for interrogation and further study. <sighs> yes, of course we need live... ...subjects. Your ceaseless interruptions do not enhance my productivity. Yes. Well... Uh, start researching some alien magnetic weapons, please. Yeah, it's either or. Okay, well, now we know. Uh, what can engineering mob do? Gun. Let's get two of those 
and two stun batons, at least for now. And we can get some armor because I think we might do well having some, you know, armor, quite honestly. Might actually stop so many of our fine soldiers from dying horribly. Speaking of which, I think we might need to hire some more. Oh, well, hang on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. No, we've got enough for a full sort of, yeah, plus the Mars. But I still want more. Go with green and yellow only. So Wang Yu Chen, Sam Brown, Natalie Kennedy. Sorry, Nils Arneson, you're not good enough. Mike Jones. And. Lucille Robert. No, Lucille Robert. It's, she is from France, it looks like. Okay, that's now we're at capacity for living quarters. Um, cool. Missing in action. Oh shit, they were both still alive. Damn. I could have brought them back. I feel really terrible about that now. Oh well. <laughs> back to it. Center on UFO and launch interceptors. Let us just launch interceptors. And speed up time. Oh. <coughs> well, shit, now I've got an abundance of UFOs. to take him down, even if we're not going to... Yeah, okay, well... That was successful. Good. Um, we also need to... Oh, okay, okay, okay. Can we do this? Select new target. Yes, excellent. Because I'll be buggered if I'm letting these damn aliens invade my airspace without at least attempting to chase them away. That's rude of them. Okay, the aircom 
combat layer is fully playable, but it is much less polished slash balanced than the rest of the game. Okay, so this is what we've got so far for the... Uh, Achievement, welcome to Earth, of course. Um, one health left for Angel One. They can head back home now. Even still. Um, yeah. Well, we've now shot down a couple of the UFOs, but over the ocean. So they get to sink beneath the waves. Slip out of our grasp. So back to full speed. another one and I bet we're going to lose an interceptor this time let's auto resolve interception failed Shut down my... Okay, let's ignore that and fight manually. Um, fellas, automatically that's cool but let's rush it rush them both because god damn it I need planes as soon as humanly possible alien magnetic weapons there are a variety of different magnetic weapons employed by the extraterrestrials, each with their own unique strengths, strengths, strengths and weaknesses. But all appear to utilize the same coil gun technology to accelerate their projectiles. The design is relatively straightforward. The barrel contains a linear arrangement of electromagnetic rings which flip polarity as the bullets pass through them. Bullet passes through them first pulling it towards the ring, then pushing it away. High rates of fire remain possible as the electronics in the gun can time this process to the microsecond. Aside from the greater 
Aside from their greater muzzle velocity, magnetic weapons thus act much like conventional firearms. This even applies to their ammunition, which bears a striking resemblance to human equivalents and inflicts almost indistinguishable wounds. <coughs> I believe this is deliberate. The extraterrestrials have almost certainly have access to more deadly weapons than these, as a coil gun is a relatively low-tech solution for a species capable of interstellar travel. One suspects they are sacrificing firepower for subterfuge. Sadly, the aliens have taken precautions to prevent us from turning their own weapons against them. The trigger mechanism is DNA locked to the intended user, something easily defeated in the laboratory, but not on the battlefield. Nonetheless, we have still learned a great deal from studying them. Indeed, it should be relatively straightforward, even by the low standards of our engineering department, to manufacture similar electromagnets from alien alloys and create barrel accelerators that boost the damage of our own firearms. Okay. Um... Now it's combat armor, clearly. And let us make some weapons. Start with an accelerated sniper rifle. An accelerated machine gun. Get at least one each of all of them. Um. Oh, damn. Accelerated cannon for our interceptors. That's alright, there will be more alien alloys. crop circles and freak storms on me. You bastards. Leave our farmers alone. Okay. Okay. Nice. Alien abduction site. We have detected alien ground forces abducting civilians in this region. Rescuing the civilians will improve our relations with the local region and allow us to recover alien resources. Um, I think this might end up being something similar to what used to be called a terror site. And golly, I hope not. I mean, we'll still do it, obviously. But, yeah. Let's auto fill it. Hannah Asano gets the accelerated sniper rifle. because she was such a good shot that uh, she deserves it. Also, the Defender armor. Um, so we're taking the Mars. You can also have some Defender armor. I'm going to give you all armor, because you deserve it, quite frankly. Well, actually, whether you deserve it or not is irrelevant. I want to try and keep you alive.
Okay, let's do this. I probably should have considered um, taking some stun weapons along as well, actually, but oh well. Think about these things sometimes just after you click launch mission. And then you kick yourself later. And then it doesn't matter at all because your entire force ends up wiped out by superior alien firepower. At least we're going in in daytime, that's useful. are attempting to capture and abduct civilians in this region. Preventing this occurring will lower panic in the entire region. Have to rescue at least five civilians from abduction tubes before the timer expires. Lost conditions, fewer than five tubes have been deactivated when the timer expires, of course, and all xenonauts are eliminated, of course. Okay, you need to get up next to the tube, right-click them, and you get three alien alloys and three alenium, which is the, uh, yeah, alien power source thing, or element. It'd be element, yeah. Mission will not automatically end if all hostiles are killed, allowing you to open more abduction tubes. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Um, Mars is already paying for itself. Change of plans. Go there. Okay. Shit. Got one. He looks like a big one. Sano has been mesmerized. <coughs> that is not good.
shit. best thing to do, since I can't do anything about having a mesmerised person right now, the best idea is my fucking sniper as well. The best idea is to just evacuate the damn thing. get everyone to relative safety and Anna Smanova here is out in the open. Great. But she seems relatively okay. I don't know. Let's see. No. Shit. Okay, well, I'll take the 68% shot then. Fucker. Maybe, right? Mesmerize that, yeah? knew it. Okay, another one of 
those bastards. Mesmerism capacity. Okay. Destroy scenery too. Ow. Oh shit. This is going well. elevated position that she could strike from. That's annoying me. a bit better. At least hit the thing. Oh, 
nice one. Damn it, this game is fairly brutal. Quite honestly. They went berserk and couldn't use their own medikit. I gotta say, this Mars is already a lifesaver. Absolute lifesaver. Because now, Bo can come in and get mesmerized. You see how that works? my way. It really, really is not going my way. You're getting a grenade, sir. Congratulations. Christ on a barnacle. Uh. Ah! Riot shield! Riot shield is a lifesaver. Stop it, all right? Come on. And she just keeps jumping through windows. Um.
Okay. Of course she drops everything when she panicked. Not quite everything, she did hang on to the... Uh, I should have done that first. Oh well! might lose the Mars, which would be fairly terrible. Mission complete? What? How is that mission complete? It's a good thing, isn't it? Yeah, alien victory. Shit. Okay. Ying Wei Song got the golden star for eliminating a cumulative total of five hostiles across their career. Uh, Crimson Heart for Hana. Hey, I had four survivors. Which, you know, man, that, that was, that was brutal. No locals survived. <laughs> about that. I need more soldiers now again. <sighs> I need more. You'll do. You'll do. You'll do. You'll do. weaponry and alenium power. I think alenium power is probably harnessing the immense power within alenium may unlock improved aircraft technologies and more efficient sources of power for our bases. Yes. Oh. 
after the combat armor. There we go. Resource, Elenium. Elenium is a yellow crystalline material that sits at the heart of most recovered alien devices. It seems to act like a futuristic battery, storing power to astonishing levels of energy density. A small sample of Elenium holds more energy than hundreds of litres of fuel oil at a fraction of the weight. Yet, Elenium is also incredibly stable. It emits no heat nor harmful radiation. And though brittle, it releases no energy when fractured. Indeed, the gentle glow that emanates from its surface is the only hint of the vast power locked within. Such a substance could be transformative for human technology. Indeed, many previously far-fetched ideas, e.g. handheld laser weapons, already seem rather more feasible. However, copious amounts of Elenium will be required to make them a reality, and manufacturing it lies well beyond our capabilities. Instead, you must liberate what we need from our fallen foes. And a Scion Autopsy. Although they are significantly larger and rather more dangerous than the Sectons encountered previously, genetic analysis suggests that these Scion corpses are in fact exactly the same species as their smaller brethren. My autopsy suggests this is simply sexual dimorphism. The robust bone structure around the torso of a scion serves to protect the organs within the chest ca cavity, the largest of which appears to be a uterus. Thus, females of the species appear to have grown larger and stronger than males to better protect their unborn children. One suspects the genders then continue to evolve into steadily more specialized roles. The cranial cavity of the scion is more bulbous, housing an entirely an unusually large and highly compre complex brain that contains several large biological structures of unknown function. Embedded within this are a number of metallic implants of similarly opaque purpose. This means that the raw physical and combat abilities of a scion are not dissimilar to that of the average human. However, the vast superiority of extraterrestrial technology means that these creatures are deadly opponents on the battlefield. More concerning still are the purported psionic abilities that give this creature its name. Every soldier that has encountered a scion on the battlefield has reported some degree of disorientation, confusion, or hallucination creeping into their consciousness. This effect is most acute when looking directly towards the creature, i.e. when attacking it. The thought that extraterrestrial beings are capable of influencing our very thoughts is troubling, Commander. These are clearly fearsome foes. <sighs> well... On that note... I hope you've uh, found this brutal, brutal expedition entertaining. And farewell for now.